Hi, I'm Lima Milan. In this video, we're going to look at the three stages of rendering audio within Ableton Live. So the key word here is rendering and within Ableton Live, because this is about the three different ways we can make new versions of audio files within the Ableton Live software environment. So the first one is crop, the second one is consolidate, and the third one is flatten. So let's have a look at those now. We've got three different examples here, and the first one is going to show the behavior of crop. Um, so if I just bring up the actual sample editor view here, and we warp the track, and just double click and add some warp markers here and just play around with the, the content. Also put it into a repitch mode and, and change the transposition and so on. Let's just play the audio file. So quite messed up in terms of what I've done for it. Now cropping the audio will allow me to re-render this audio. So I'm just right clicking and on the actual audio waveform and choosing to crop the sample. Now, one thing I want you to watch when we do this is down here where we can see the original file name and the original file sample rate and the original file bit depth. This is the data type that the audio is made of. So if I go to a crop sample, what's happened is the audio has now been re-rendered to a new audio file, but it's only at the audio file level. Anything that's happening within this clip is still live and can be manipulated. It's not being committed to that new file. So my warp markers are still in place. My warp is still happening in real time, so I can change the warp mode. My transposition is still set to a, a bespoke customized setting that I've set. It's not being committed to the file. And also uh, the sample rate and bit depth remain the same too. So it's the real lowest level of commitment we're doing to this new uh, audio file. Um, if you want to see the file itself and sort of check this behavior, you can either show it in Finder on, uh, on OS X, or you can do show in browser so it shows in the Ableton Live browser as well. So that's my new rendered version of that file. So let's go to the next version of the actual uh, audio file. So I'll just do Command and L to loop that. And on this one, I'll play the example first because I realized I didn't play the original file as it was. But uh, let's play that first and then I'll show you how the next stage, which is going to be con to consolidate this audio file and how that differs from crop. OK, so that's the original file as it is. Now, the actual audio of this file is intentionally lower than the original file that I used in the first example. So it's got a lower peak value. So what this means is there's a distance of non-used volume between the highest portion or the highest peak in my waveform and the potentially highest peak a waveform can be, which is 0 right at the top, 0 dB. So this is basically shows us what consolidate does. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose to consolidate this file. OK, so let's have a look at what's happened. So the, the file's been re-rendered. If I actually just go back one for a minute and just add some, some unique attributes to that. So let's just change and, and let's do our warp marker positions and so on like I did before. And then let's choose to flatten it this time. Sorry, consolidate, my mistake. So now that's consolidated, you'll notice that the transposition has been committed to the file. The warp positioning has been committed to the file. Um, if you've seen this already, you may have noticed, but I'll just highlight the fact the actual sample rate has stayed the same because that's, that's what I'm working at, at the moment. But the bit depth has actually changed. Before, if I go back one, it was a 32-bit file. And now it's a 24-bit file. And that's because of the record preference in the Ableton Live preferences. So I'll just go to preferences here go to the record tab and then for recorded files it's set to 24 bit at the moment so generally you think of that as when i want to hit record and either record an external sound or re-record the audio from one track to another track um, that's the the file type it will use when it records the file but it also stands for what the file format will be when you consolidate your file as well so remember crop just surface level just Basically, if you make a, a shortened edit of a file, it's handy for that. It re-renders the file, but doesn't commit anything different to it. Now, if we have a look at our um, consolidated file, there's one other thing that's happened, which is, is an easy thing to miss. Now, if we go back to the step where I hadn't consolidated, it's just the command and Z there. The other thing that's happening here 
is that file, if you remember, it isn't actually a full volume or as loud as it can be. But the gain of the clip is at zero. Now, if I just recommit by doing the Command Shift and Z, so we reapplied the consolidation, you'll see that the actual gain has been dropped down for some reason to, in this case, nearly minus nine decibels. And the reason for that is another thing Consolidate does to your audio files is it normalizes the audio too. So Consolidate didn't do this. The volume of the original file was retained when we did the, uh, the crop um, command. But with Consolidate, when we do that, it's changing the volume of the file. It's scanning the entire file, saying, OK, in this audio that I'm re-rendering, where is the highest peak? OK, that's the highest peak. And in this case, the highest peak was at minus 9 decibels. So it normalizes and goes, OK, well, I'm going to re-render the file. But when I do that, I'll turn the whole file up by 9 decibels. And now this new waveform is normalized. But in order for this uh, consolidated clip to not suddenly be 9 decibels louder, what it's automatically done is offset the gain of the clip. So to our ears, we don't hear any difference. But it has actually done another aspect of change to our audio file, which is to normalize the file. Right, so let's move to the final stage, which is our flatten stage. So we go to Command and L, just to loop that. So this one's been modified quite a bit. And it's not been modified in the clip section this time. It's actually the, the warp is disabled. So we go over to the processing aspect where the devices are. And you can see that I've got various different things going on with the file. So if you remember what it sounded like before, it's kind of like a breakage uh, drum and bass kind of beat uh, with some bass and so on. Uh, now it's being manipulated with some devices. So this is happening in real time right now. I can modify any of the parameters. Right, so if I choose to flatten this, the first step in doing that is to do what's called freeze, which is to temporarily rewrite all of the audio output of this channel to a, an audio file. So in practice, that's just to save com uh, computational power. So if you've got a very heavy project and your computer's struggling, you can freeze and temporarily take the load off the computer for that track in terms of it calculating all these real-time effects. Flattens the next stage. So if I choose to flatten the track, and we go back to the clip view, you'll see that the actual, well, you'll hear, sorry, that the actual change that the the devices we're doing to the audio have been committed to the audio file. So one thing that's happening here is we've committed everything to audio. And then the other thing that's happening is the file type that's been created is, again, slightly different. So we've had crop, which didn't change the file data type, just re-rendered an edited version. We had uh, Consolidate, which committed the clip properties to the new rendered file, and it normalized that new audio file, and then offset the clip gain so we didn't hear that it was any different in volume as the actual file is different. And then we have this freeze and then flatten uh, aspect of re-rendering our audio, which obviously is handy. It commits our frozen you know, or f yeah, our frozen uh, version of that track and its devices to an audio file on the flat and then commits it to a new uh, render of that. Um, but what it does is also change it to a different bit depth. So it's, it's a best bit depth for the actual resolution that runs within Ableton Live in terms of how its audio engine works. So it's not a problem that it does this, but it's just something to be aware of. So the freeze file itself is still the same sample rate because that's what our project is running at but the bit depth is now at a 32-bit resolution. And that's not something that we, we change. That's just something that's the behavior of Ableton Live. So the reason why the 32-bit aspect is, is good to know about in this case is if I want to reveal the location of that frozen file here, it's a 32-bit file. Now, 32-bit files don't necessarily play in all types of audio players. So you could be potentially in a rush where you've, let's say, for instance, you've, you've mastered a track inside Ableton Live. You did some devices, but basically you were struggling to hear what was going on. So you, you froze it, and then you flattened it. And then that's your, your file that you might pass to someone else to play uh, or pass to them to use as, as a loop that they're going to use in their project and so on. Uh, in this case, because it's a 32-bit file, it may not necessarily play in the other person's audio player or potentially their door uh, as well. So 
just basically to highlight the differences between how these three different render modes work and also the, the potential complications that can happen between the three. So that's looking at audio in Ableton Live and how we can render it in three different stages, crop, consolidate, and flatten.